we're, we're dealing with the units of rationals. And so we're going to talk about asymptotes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to trace this equation. And you notice that when I do trace it, my pin doesn't pick up. It's, it's just continuous. And uh, this equation, this graph, is a continuous graph because it has no jumps, breaks, or hole. You can draw the graph and your pencil never leaves the paper. So that's, that's a way you can tell if a graph is continuous, is if your pin uh, picks up. So this is a continuous graph. Now in contrast, here I have what appears to be linear, and then that's a hole, so I pick up my pin, and then I continue. So by me picking up my pin, this is considered to be undefined at that point. So on your notes, make sure you write undefined. So when x is equal to negative 2, it's undefined. Um, so this is called having a hole in the graph. Uh, the technical word or the definition is removable discontinuity at x equal negative 2 because there's a hole. The hole in the graph is called removable because you can make the function continuous by redefining it as x equal negative 2 so that f of negative 2 equals 1. So because you can actually just close that hole and you can define the value, that's why it's called removable. So there's a removable discontinuity. Another characteristic of a removable discontinuity is you'll always see this in the equation. You have the same factor in the numerator and you have the same factor in the denominator. And that's where the whole is, exists. In contrast, this equation has a break. So how do you know you have a break? You can use your pencil test. So here I have my pin. It has to pick up to go to the other side. And that's why it's called a break. The technical definition is a non-removable discontinuity at x equal 2. There is no way to redefine the function at 2. So that's why it's called non-removable discontinuity. These lines, this is the vertical line. This is your vertical asymptote. We talked about that in the last lesson, which is at x equals 2. And this is your horizontal asymptote, which occurs at y equals 1. So this is your horizontal asymptote. What are the domain and the points of discontinuity? So what are the domain and the points of discontinuity of each rational function? Are the points of discontinuity removable or non-removable? What are the x and y intercepts? So what they did here, they simplified the rational. In fact, what they, what they did is they factored. What do you think would be the reason why they would factor this rational? It's because you see the two factors in the denominator? They're, that's going to help us to figure out the asymptotes. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to use Desmos. And uh, I want you to take a minute to figure out where are the asymptotes. Now, the vertical asymptote, if you look at the vertical asymptote, you notice that from going from left to right, it's approaching 1x equal 1. So that's our first asymptote, vertical asymptote. And why is it vertical? Because you have x. This other, uh, other asymptote, we have x equals. Now, you notice this is 2, this is 3. And if you go from right, from right to left, you notice that this graph is approaching uh, 3. So x equals 3 is your other vertical asymptote. Now, it doesn't ask for the horizontal asymptote, uh, but the horizontal asymptote will be y equals 0. So there is a horizontal asymptote. The function is undefined at x minus 3 equals 0 and x minus 1 equals 0. So what are you going to fill in here for x? Well, the first one was x equal 3. That's the, that was one of the asymptotes. And the other asymptote is x equal 1. The domain of the function is a set of all real numbers except, and you have to look at the denominator. What's going to make the denominator 0? Well, you notice that if I put a 3 here, it's going to be 3 minus 3 is 0, and 1 minus 1 is 0. So the domain of the function 
is a set of all numbers except 3 and except 1. So if you want to figure out your x-intercept, well, the y-intercept is easy to find. You see that's the y-intercept is 0, 1. So I'm going to write y-intercept. And the x-intercept, let's go ahead and take a minute to figure that out. So if you look at the table, when x is 0, y is 1, that's the y-intercept. And when x is negative 3, and x is, uh, when x is negative 3, y is 0, so that's the x-intercept. So we're going to go ahead and do B, and I did graph it, and here is a graph. Now if I use the pencil test, you notice that you see the point? I'm moving the point from left to right. It never breaks up. So this graph is not discontinuous. This graph is actually uh, continuous. So I'm going to write here this graph is continuous, and it's looking for the y-intercept, and you notice the y-intercept is 0, negative 5. And the x-intercept, uh, if we go ahead and make a table, 0, negative 5, and so I'm going to go ahead and type in here 5, and you notice the, the x-intercept is going to be 5, comma, 0. So in this case, in this graph, it was continuous, and there was no discontin discontinuity. What are the vertical asymptotes? What are the vertical asymptotes of the graph? What is the domain? And how do the vertical asymptotes relate to the domain? So let's go ahead and graph. So by just looking at the graph, we notice that this graph is approaching 2, but it doesn't cross it. So our uh, first asymptote is at x, x equals 2. Our next asymptote is at x equals 3. So there's our asymptotes. So it says since 2 and 3 are the zeros of the denominator, then the lines x equal 2 and x equal 3 are the vertical asymptotes. So the domain is going to be all the numbers except for 2 and 3. And the question is how does it relate to the domain? So the vertical asymptotes are not in the domain. The vertical asymptotes are not in the domain. So the first asymptote are the vertical asymptote. We notice that x, as x gets to 4, it goes to negative infinity. So you see that's the vertical asymptote. By the way, you have 4 minus 4, that's going to make the denominator 0. Now we also have our horizontal asymptote, y equals 0. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for a minute. And then you also notice that this factor is the same as this factor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace, and I'm going to start on this side. Now, I want you to notice something right when I hit negative 3. You notice that it, it is uh, negative 3. Oh, actually, it's we're using this graph. Okay. So when we get to negative 3, and it's kind of hard to split there, you see that open circle. Now, you might be saying, why is that undefined? Remember, if we have a common factor, if we have a common factor, that makes it uh, a hole. So there is a hole at x equal negative 3. We also have a vertical asymptote at x equal 4 because that makes the denominator 0. And then we have a horizontal asymptote. Okay, we're going to find uh, the horizontal asymptote algebraically. Do you notice that in this equation and the numerator, the highest power, the highest degree is 1. And the denominator, the highest degree is 1. So to find the asymptote, you draw, you drop the negative 3, so you're going to have to divide 2x over x, and you notice it's 2. And that's going to be our uh, horizontal asymptote. y equals 2 is our horizontal asymptote. So let me go ahead and show you that. And so I'm going to go ahead and graph y equals 2 and you notice that is indeed our horizontal asymptote now in the other case when the degree in the denominator is 2 and on the top it's less then the uh, the horizontal asymptote will always be 0 so if the denominator degree is always larger than the numerator the horizontal asymptote is always going to be 